I'm really excited to show you guys something today. This is a feature we've been working on for a really long time and we were planning even at the beginning of Buddy Bus Platform how we we're gonna do this. And I think you guys are really gonna love what we've built here. It's a site-wide document system allowing you to upload basically any file type you want anywhere throughout the site. So here we are in the activity feed and you can see we have a style sheet uploaded. I can click to expand and see a preview right here in the activity. I can click here to pop open this really nice preview window where I can actually scroll through and see all the contents of the file. And I can edit the file description and leave comments. And here's a music file. And of course it's playable right here in the browser. Here we have a zip. So this is a file type that of course we can't give a preview, but you do have our nice zip icon. And when I pop it open, we can download the file from here. And of course we can add our description and we can leave comments. One thing I'll bring up here, it's been a really highly requested feature from the beginning that people have asked us if we could add descriptions into the photo pop-ups. So once you download this update, you'll see that that's actually added. So now you can add descriptions to your photo pop-ups and your document pop-ups. And another highly requested feature was that people wanted the comments in the pop-up to be in sync with the comments in the activity post. So we've gone ahead and done that now to both documents and photos. So you can see the comment here and you can see it's added here in sync. Right. So this will apply to all newly added media after you download this update. And it only will work if there's one document or one photo attached to the activity post. Because if you had two, then there's no way to know which place to sync to, right? Each piece of media would get its own comments in that scenario. And then here you have a PDF that's been uploaded. So let me pop that open. And you can see we even provide a preview image from a PDF. So what we're actually doing is when you upload this document to your server, we're running a script on there that will pull out the first page of the document and convert it into an image and display it here as this nice preview. So that's what the experience is like in the activity feed. And then over here, you can see we have a file folder system that allows you to move your files into different folders and organize them like Dropbox or Google Drive. And so it basically acts as a central document resource area showing all the documents that have been uploaded by everyone throughout the site, but only visible to you based on the permissions that have been set to each document. I'll get into that in a bit about document privacy. And then if I go into my documents, from here I can see every document that I've uploaded to my activity feed and to, into my profile. And I can rename documents from here as well. So I can go like this and click rename. And I can edit the privacy. And let's say I want it to only be visible to my connections. I can download, I can copy download link. So that copies it to the clipboard and then I can share that link with anybody and it will download. And the download link also respects the permissions. So if I share that link with someone who does not have access to the file, then it will redirect them to the homepage. It will not download it. I can move. We have this really cool move pop-up. So move document to, these are the folders that I have currently. So let's say I want to move it into assets. I could do that. Or I could even create a new folder in here right on the fly. And I can set the folder privacy, leave that as public. So now we've created a folder inside documents, assets, archives, and I can click move. And now if I open up assets and go into the archives folder, we'll find our document. If I come back here, I can also go into my groups and see all the documents that have been uploaded into the groups that I belong to. And we can actually move documents into folders even from here in the activity feed. So for example, I could click here and click move and I can move this MP3 file somewhere. I'll just move it into assets. I come back here. It's been moved. So as you can see, we have a document system in my profile showing all the documents I've uploaded. And of course we support it a similar way in groups as well. So if I open up this group and go to the documents page, you can see we have a file folder system in the group. I can upload a document directly into the group. So for example, I'll upload this JavaScript file. And now that's been added and we can comment on it in the group. If I go into the group feed, 
of course, we get this beautiful JavaScript preview. And then we also support documents in forum replies and in messages, which I'll show you real quick. So here I am having a message conversation with Madeline. You can see I've shared some documents with her. Oh, I got a new document from Trent. Let's see that he sent a Zoom file. So I can click to download the Zoom file and I can copy the download link. So as you can see here, the document system on day one has a ton of features and it's really beautiful and engaging. And not only that, but it's extremely customizable. So I'll go into the backend options in a moment. I'll show you how we can control everything. So here we are in the WordPress admin. I've purposely turned everything off so I can kind of re-enable it all from the beginning. So you know how to set everything up. So here in components, you're gonna go and make sure that you've enabled media uploading and then go into those settings. That's at Buddy Boss Settings Media. And from here, we're gonna turn on all the places that we want documents to appear. So I want them to be in profiles and profile activity, groups and group activity, private messages and forums. And I click save. That's turned on document uploading everywhere. And then we see this warning saying we need to create a documents page. So we're gonna go here and click under documents, create page. It should create the page for you automatically. And then we click save. And that's it, you have a site-wide document system now. If I come back to the front end, that page we created called Documents is this one. It's going to house the central documents library. And then the document uploading you see everywhere else has already been enabled. And then I'm jumping into another server just for a moment that has this notice. You may get this notice that says your server needs Imagic installed to enable live previews for PDF documents. Ask your web host. Most likely you won't see this because the majority of servers that host WordPress sites will already have this installed. But just in case, if this is there, all that means is that if you upload a PDF, you will not get a PDF preview. It will give you just an icon like this and that's it. And if you ask your web host to install this, which they should be able to do pretty easily, then you will get the PDF previews. All right, so moving along, I'm going to show you how to add the documents link in the title bar and also how to add the My Documents link here and some of the cool icons that we've created. So I'm gonna go into the back end, and then I'm gonna head into Appearance Menus. And so in the title bar, I'm gonna grab this Documents page we just created before and save that in there. So here's our Documents library. And then I'll go into Buddy Panel. And from here, I'll click Buddy Boss, which as a reminder, these are all the logged in links. So these are basically links relative to the login user's profile. So I'm gonna check the documents link from here and add that if you want. And refresh, and this gives me a quick link to my documents. And on that note, I'll show you, we created this huge library of icons for all of our document files. That way, in our timeline, every type of file has its own custom icon that looks nice. It makes it easier to understand what's going on. And there's actually a ton of them. So if I go in here and click on icon, we can go to file types and you can see all of these file types that we've created custom icons for. And in our font cheat sheet at this URL, you can access all the icons here if you wanna use them in your child theme or any of your customizations. So if I search here for file, you can see there's 62 custom file icons now. And on this topic, within this update, we've actually brought in our custom icon set, which is called BB icons, into the BuddyBus platform itself. In the past, BuddyBus platform was loading dash icons that comes from WordPress. But in order to have all these icon types work in any theme, we decided it was time to move our custom icon set into BuddyBus platform. So this is all contained in the platform now, which is a little bit cleaner. And then we can actually customize further. If I go into BuddyBus settings, and go into media, but I'm gonna show you, we can turn on and off any file type we want and add our own custom file types into the document system. So here under documents, click file extensions, manage which file extensions are allowed to be uploaded. If you click here, you will see all the file extensions that come out of the box. And these are basically all the really popular file extensions that most networks would support. And so let's say as an example, I don't want Word documents to be uploaded. I would just uncheck this and click save. And then here we give you the option to add your own custom extensions. So from here you can enter any extension you want. And we even give you the ability to select an icon that represents that category of file. So for example, 
if you wanted to add a PHP or Python file, you would check to use the code icon. Or if you wanted to add InDesign files, you might pick the design file icon. Note that I have another video that goes in depth about how to fully take advantage of this interface and how to add your own custom icons and select the MIME type, etc. For that, just click this button view tutorial when you're in the admin and it will take you to that video. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to properly set up documents in groups. So when I go into a group, if I click manage and then go into settings, you'll see that we have a new option on the group which is group documents, which members of this group are allowed to manage documents. So just like all the other options you'll find in a group, the options are all group members, organizers and moderators only, and organizers only. And you can just select, if I pick organizers only, then they're the only role in the group that can upload documents and folders. And I also wanna show you what we've done with search. We've taken care to make sure that it's easy to find your documents. So let's say I wanna look up this beaverbuilder.css file. I could type in builder and that will show up. And I could even type in .css and get that in the extensions list. And I can even go in the network search and get the similar results. So to enable documents in network search, when you're in the back end, go to body bus settings, search. This is assuming you've already enabled network search in the components area and then when you find documents and folders, just check those and that will enable them in the search. And then I also wanna show you how privacy is working for your documents. We've provided improved privacy options throughout the whole network in activity, photos, and documents. And I have another video showing the changes we've done in activity, but in the activity feed, I can go to any activity post and control its privacy and I can set it during upload. And in the documents area, I can change the privacy of any document and it's worth noting that if a document has been uploaded into a group, then I can't change the privacy. And the reason is because the privacy is inherited from that group, as you can see here, based on group privacy. So this document was uploaded into a group that happens to be a public group. Therefore, all content within that group is going to be public, not just documents, but also forums, activity feeds, everything. So if we were to switch this group to private, then all the documents that have been uploaded into the group will be switched to private as well. And when I go upload a file, you'll see that I can pick the privacy during the point of upload. And when I create a folder, I can select the privacy as well. So this is a global site-wide improvement. And then I'll show you what documents are like in forums. So I'll click to reply. And then I'll go ahead and add PDF. And then let's say I try to add a file that's not allowed. It's grayed out. And if I try to manually put in the drop zone, get this nice notice showing me all the file types that are supported. So we've taken care of everything there. Then I click post. And sure enough, we get our PDF preview in our document here in the forum. So we're really proud of this feature. I think it's really well implemented and our team did an awesome job. And I hope you guys really enjoy it and find it useful. And as time goes on, we've got even more cool things coming. For example, in a future update, we'll add support for video uploading throughout the network with live video previews, more improvements to photos and all kinds of other cool stuff coming. So stay tuned.